on Tuesday, temperatures in the UK had soared past 40 degrees for the first time. Now, this is not normal. And I want to cut through all the BS about, oh, this is just summer. Now, you've heard people say, oh, enjoy the weather. Besides, we had this in 1976. But the highest it got to in 76 was 35 degrees. So what we have now is far higher. So it's not like 1976, it's far hotter. And this is a trend, not a one-off event. Now, I don't know if you've seen the viral Facebook post in which it tries to make out that the Met is pushing fear among us. Well, it's fake. Now, you can see on the left, the image is depicted as happy and sunshiny. And the right is a supposedly new style of forecast, which is supposed to manufacture fear. Now, the picture on the right has been photoshopped. That image does not belong to the Met Office. That's some random person with an agenda to change the colors to make it look like the Met is trying to scare mummers. Now, why does it seem like so many people are so quick to fall for this? Now, for me, the number one issue is the media. Trust in the mainstream media is at its all time low. Of course, the mainstream media, it, it, it protects the powerful establishment, protects money interests. So understandably, people don't have a favorable view of the mainstream media, but it doesn't then mean that any alternative media or anything you see is the truth. Now, specifically when it comes to climate change, there is a worrying amount of fake news that's convincing people that climate change is a hoax. Now, ironically, this is actually reinforced by the mainstream media because the mainstream media like to uh, platform skeptics in the interest of balance. Um, that also seeds the doubt among people. And then you look at other outlets such as GB News, the absolute idiots, idiots of GB News constantly push climate denial. But it's not just the media, it's our politicians too. And what scares me a lot is that politicians are becoming more and more confident to publicly denounce climate change or at least wade in to the rhetoric. Then we got Sunak saying, oh, no more wind farms. Now, maybe he's just appeasing to the Tory right, but it doesn't make a difference. He's still saying it on a public forum. Now, I know it's the Express, but people still read it. Now, look at this subheading. How much will net zero cost us? When we have millions and millions of climate refugees, when forests are on fire, cities are underwater, then who cares about the bloody economy because there won't be one. The UK is giving massive subsidies to the fossil fuel industry despite making record profits. Now, those that subscribe to this worldview, inadvertently or not, are essentially in a death cult. Now, that might seem hyperbole, that might seem extreme, but really think about it. Think about the forces that are trying to stop people and institutions to really do something about climate change, to stop ecological breakdown, to stop the planet from burning, to stop our species ending. So yeah, it actually is a death cult. Now there are people in the political discourse, there are people on our airwaves who shout snowflake and woke to literally people like, well, we just don't want the human race to cease to exist. Um, but look, you're probably thinking, Curtis, why do people want to push this agenda? What benefit do they have? Well, first of all, this comes from the top. Uh, energy companies do not want to acknowledge it. The profits and money they make from the current system gives them no incentive to do better. And why would they want renewable energies? Because where's the long-term profit? So the public being skeptical about man-made climate change, that benefits the profits and it benefits the CEOs of these companies. Now, in the 80s, Shell and Exxon knew about man-made climate change. They made sure that the research they had done was hidden to the public. In the 1980s, oil companies like Exxon and Shell carried out internal assessment of the carbon dioxide released by fossil fuels and forecast the planetary consequences of these emissions. In 1982, for example, Exxon predicted that by 2060, CO2 levels would reach around 560 parts per million, double the pre-industrial level, and that this would push the planet's average temperatures up by about two degrees over then current levels, and even more compared to pre-industrial levels. So they knew this, they hid it, and they continued to make a profit by exploiting our planet, and by extension, exploiting the people. Now, of course, 
Climate change is going to get all of us in the end anyway, unless we do something about it. But right now, just because it's not in front of you, right now, we currently have um, a huge amount of climate refugees. People are dying in the global south and in poorer nations. And this isn't an individual issue. It's down to these companies. And these companies, as I've just pointed out, are well aware of that fact. And they're using their power to lobby our governments, spend money on campaigns to stop these important changes from happening. So there are lives the ecosystem in the death cult. The media, in which is complicit, they lack a serious debate. They often platform climate skeptics, even though 99% of the scientific community say it's bullshit. Our political system, in which it wraps itself around corporations and supports its wants and needs, and corporations itself are killing us all.